I was looking forward to some time away from work. I lived just outside of El Paso, Texas, and I was doing okay for myself. I had a steady job as a waiter at a nice restaurant just on the outskirts of the city. And sometimes, I would do music gigs with my band, Aliza. The vocalist and I were an item, and I thought we made one hell of a duo on stage. And we even had a few fans. I wasn't unhappy, and far from it. But I wanted a short break, just a bit of time to recharge my batteries and go back to something familiar. Something safe. Aliza kissed me on the lips as I left that morning. A bag packed. Drive safe, she told me. I would have been happy for her to come with me, but she couldn't get the time off of work. Besides, I don't know how comfortable she really would have been going down to see Papito Juan with me. My parents died when I was young, so Papito Juan raised me. He was a stubborn old man living on his farm down in Mexico, but I was happy with him. Since I had immigrated to the United States, we hadn't stayed in touch as much as I had wanted. He had no computer or email. All he had were his letters, and the occasional phone call. I cherished those, but they didn't diminish the worries in the back of my mind. He was old, and even when I had left, it showed. I could hear it in his voice when he spoke to me. Going home to him was just as much about checking to make sure that that stubborn old man was still getting by, as it was about taking a break. When my car pulled up to his old ranch, he was out front, sitting on his porch and waiting for me. Javier, my boy. He rose slowly to his feet, approaching me to pull into a hug. His skin was like tan leather and rough to the touch but his eyes held the same sparkle that I had known all my life. Not even time had taken that from him. We had dinner together, and I told him about Aliza, about how my music was coming along and about my job. Seeing the way that he smiled as I talked, I knew that he was proud of me. How have you been? I finally asked him. His smile faltered. As well as I can be, my body gets sore and sore every day, and this year's harvest wasn't so good. But I suppose that's the way it goes. Next year's will be better. If you need help, I could stand. No, no, no. Don't. Stay up north. You're making something of your life, Javier. It's more than I did. He smiled sadly. This ranch, it's nice. I'm happy. But if I would have had your opportunities, I would have taken them. You've got a chance at a better life than I ever had. This land is just land. This ranch, just a building. This is my life, not yours. He reached out a hand to rest on mine. I'm happy here the way that I am. I'll get by. What means the most to me right now is what means the most to any parent. I want to see you thrive, and you're doing that now. I'll tell you what I told your father. Don't give it up for the ranch. I've been here for 50 years now, and I know that it's not worth it. Not really. He patted my hand. You know, you would be so proud of the man that you're becoming. They both would be. He knew how much it meant to me to hear that. And I knew that he meant it. With that said, he got up to find a deck of cards. We played just like we had when I was a boy. Until the sun went down and it was time for bed. I woke up to the sound of screaming. Scrambling out of bed, I peered out of the window into the darkness of Papito Juan's land. I could see movement in the shadows, and the faint outline of his old barn in the darkness. I had seen this all before. Coyotes looking for livestock. Almost on instinct, I was out the door. I heard Papito Juan fumbling around to get ready, but his old bones just weren't as fast as they used to be. I knew where he kept the gun, and I had done this before. I've got it! 
I called and I just barely heard him call out for me to wait before I was outside with the rifle. In the porch light, I could see one of the pigs rush out of the barn. I heard the scream of a goat and I broke into a run. The barn door was open and in the dim light, I could see the shape of some sort of animal and hear the gnashing of teeth. I saw the reflection of light from the porch and the eyes of a dead goat. And above it, red eyes so fierce that they made me freeze. The creature hissed at me. Hissed, not growled. I had seen coyotes before and this was not a coyote. My next thought was a mountain lion. I knew they lived in this area but I had never seen one. The creature reared up, still staring at me. I'm blinking as I raise the rifle and I open fire. The first shot staggered it. It howled in pain and I shot again and again, watching the creature try and retreat further into the darkness. But the barn had no other exit. I was between it and escape. I think I shot it about four or five times before it collapsed, breathing heavily before letting out a pitiful whimper and dying. Behind me, I could hear Papito Juan approaching, and I saw the light of his flashlight. Mountain lion, I think, I said breathlessly. I kept the gun trained on it, as Papito Juan drew closer. As he did, I saw what I had killed. It wasn't a mountain lion. The creature had coarse brown fur, and a twisted face that looked more like a snake's than a cat's. Its fangs were massive and it protruded from its jaw. Along its legs and belly, I spotted scaly skin, and it had bird-like talons on its front legs. Its eyes were blood red, and it seemed alive even in death. A bloody hole in its neck was my only reassurance that it wouldn't be getting back up. It wasn't as big as I had been expecting, a little smaller than a mountain lion but that hadn't made much of a difference to the goat that it had torn apart. It had killed the animal with a vicious bite to the neck, and it had gone after the organs next. It had been in the middle of feasting on those when I had interrupted it. What the hell is that? I asked. I nudged the creature with the barrel of the gun. That's what's been killing my animals for the past week, Papito Juan said bitterly. Chupacabra. I looked at him, a little confused. I had heard the name before. It was a made-up cryptid that decorated merch at tourist traps. As a child, I believed in them, but I knew better now. A chupacabra? Seriously, you've got to be joking. That's just a story. Does that look like a story to you, boy? Papito Juan replied, and crouched down beside the dead beast. It's small, maybe a juvenile. The one I saw a few weeks ago looked bigger. He sounded concerned and then he looked back up at me. Did you see anything else? Was there another one? No, I didn't. Just this one. I looked down at that creature. The chupacabra. I could barely believe my eyes. Might just be that my eyes are mistaken. Papito Juan said softly, Go get the gas can so we can burn this. I'll round up the animals. I did as he said and I watched as he dragged the chupacabra out of the barn to burn the body. As it burned, Papito Juan rolled himself a cigarette and lit it. He stared at the carcass of the creature and its victim, stoic and silent. How many of these things have you seen? I finally asked. I had lived with him almost my entire life and I had never seen anything like that. A few, he replied. They first came to my father's ranch when I was a boy. They're hunters by nature. Never ending appetites. Tough to kill and vengeful. Not sure if they feel like we do or not, but their kind can smell each other from far off. If they smell the dead one, They'll come to investigate. I don't know if he has any friends, but I do not want to find out. They're rare these days. I figured that most of them had died out years ago. 
hunted to the brink of extinction by angry ranchers. They're rare these days. Most who claim to see one are liars. He took a drag of his cigarette. They usually stay down south. Never expected I'd seen one so close to the border. Hopefully this one's just a straggler. Staring into the flames, I looked back over at Papito Juan. Has it been here long? I asked. Not sure. I heard about some killings down the road, but that could have been coyotes too. There were a few here earlier this week, before you came. I shot at it a few nights ago, and I was hoping that I had scared it off. Well, I guess it's got the message now, I murmured. Papito Juan chuckled. Yes, I suppose it does. But I tried not to dwell on that night. I tried to focus on my chores and help as much as I could. After all, whatever the thing was, it was dead now. We didn't talk about the chupacabra the next day, and the night that followed, I slept soundly. I thought about telling Elisa about what I had seen, but I didn't know if she would have believed me. I wasn't even sure that I believed it. It was a couple of days into my stay when I went into town that afternoon to pick up supplies. Papito Juan had intended to go, but I made him stay at a spot to the kitchen table. And you rest up, you work hard enough as it is, I told him. I'll make the trip. Don't spoil me too much, boy. This old man has to stretch his weary bones every so often. And he can stretch them when I'm not around, I replied. He huffed in approval and seemed to accept that I was going whether he liked it or not. Well then, if you're offering. Stubborn as he was, Papito Juan seemed happy that I was willing to save him the trip. He handed over the keys to his truck and he helped me make the grocery list. There is a small store in town, a few miles down the road. I recognized some of the people inside and I lost a bit of time catching up with them and making small talk. The old community hadn't forgotten me, even though that I had left. I was appreciative of that. The drive back to Papito Juan's ranch was relaxing. I hummed along to the radio and as I pulled up to the house, I felt content. Stepping out under the sun, I brought the groceries inside and I called out to announce that I was home. Hey old man. No answer. Papito Juan. He wasn't in the kitchen or in his bedroom. My next stop was to check out back in the barn. I found him lying in the dirt between the house and the barn. He was on his side and from a distance. I didn't see the damage. I didn't see how he had been torn open and ripped apart. Even now I wish that I would have never seen it. I had seen my fair share of gore and death. Papito Juan had made me slaughter animals for meat in my childhood. He taught me how to gut and skin. But it's different when you see somebody you love cut open like that. The scream of anguish that came out of my throat was deafening as the tears streamed down my cheeks. Flies crawled across Papito Juan's open eyes looking for a place to lay their eggs. I shooed them away as I cradled his body and finally I had to pull myself away to call the police. They chalked it up to an animal attack. He had been complaining about similar livestock attacks, and the predator had probably seen an opportunity to ambush him at the time. No one talked about how there was no blood in his veins, or near his body. The local authorities shot a couple of coyotes that had been in the area, and the small town blamed the killings on them. It was the most logical answer, after all. I buried Papito Juan beside my parents in a nearby cemetery. Later I told the lawyers to sell his ranch. It was my property to do with as I pleased. And I knew that Papito Juan wouldn't have wanted me to stay tied to it. He wanted me to continue living my own life. And I thought that it was a better way to honor him than holding onto a piece of land that I didn't want or need. When all was said and done, I went back to El Paso early and driving home in a haze and into the arms of Eliza. On my first night back, she held me as I cried and I let out all of my grief. 
It hung over me like a cloud, but I still tried to go on like I was supposed to. But the world felt like a darker place. I had lost my father, and in him, I had lost my home. I wasn't sure if going back to work would be a good idea, but I ended up being thankful for it. It took my mind off of Papito Juan. Just the return to some sort of familiar routine felt nice. The restaurant was a little more upscale than a standard bar and grill, but not by much. I had taken Elise here once or twice myself and the food was good. The managers treated me well, and most of the staff was nice to be around, save for one of the line cooks. His name was Rob and I had known him for my first week. When I had caught a glimpse of the swastika tattoo on his arm, I knew that he and I would never get along. And sure enough, Rob hated me, simply because I had been born a few hours south of where I worked. But he at least knew enough not to say anything about it. Management tolerated him, but only as long as he did the job. The dining room had a nice panoramic window overlooking the highway outside. There wasn't much of a view, but I didn't mind that. Some nights we had live music, some nights I had even performed. By the bar were a couple of TVs. They either played sports or the news, never anything else. When I wasn't too busy before the dinner rush, sometimes I would watch them briefly. My first day back wasn't a particularly busy day. It was mid-afternoon and I had only a couple of tables to tend to. They were taken care of so I passed the time by watching the news. Though the TVs were muted, I could still piece together the story. There had been a murder, a street musician I had seen in downtown El Paso a few times. He had been good, a guitarist like me, and with the pain of losing Papita Juan still fresh in my heart, I found myself mourning him too as I went through the day. I didn't look into the murder until I got home and I thought to Google it. Morbid curiosity made me want to know what had happened to the guy, and there was a small hope that whoever had killed him had been caught. What I found had turned my blood cold. The guitarist had been found at a bus station that morning. There weren't many details other than he had been mauled and the police suspected that it was a body dump, since there was no blood found at the scene. That was all I needed. I tried to dismiss my fears, but as I lay awake that night beside Eliza, I couldn't help but wonder. What if something followed me back from Mexico? The chupacabra was dead. I had killed it myself, but Papito Juan had said that it had looked small. He had called it a juvenile. He said that he had seen a bigger one. The second death, barely a day later, didn't ease my concerns. The victim was a motorist who had been stopped on the side of the highway this time. No one I knew. I don't know if that made it easier or harder for me. The details had been the same. A mutilated body with no blood. This one was called an animal attack too. I guess that wasn't wrong. They just didn't really know what kind of animal had attacked them. Papito Juan had told me that the chupacabra were vengeful. I wondered what he meant by that. He had told me that what mattered the most to any parent was to see their child thrive. And he had called the chupacabra a juvenile. He said that he had seen a bigger one. I knew what was coming and I knew that it wouldn't take long for it to find me. They were hunters after all. That's what they do. I thought about asking for more time off, but it didn't seem to make any sense. Part of me didn't want to believe the danger that I was in. I didn't want to believe that something was coming for me. Even if I could have asked, what would I have said? Explaining that I wanted more time off to hide from a chupacabra would have sounded just a little insane. The management trusted me, but not enough to believe something like that. After the second attack, I figured I would try some more practical measures. I bought a gun, a small pistol that I could easily hide. I figured that I would kill one of these things, so I could probably kill another. While I worked, I kept it in my locker. I kept it in my hand as I walked to the car after work, and in my pocket whenever I left the house. 
It made me feel safer, even as I heard stories of other animal attacks. They got little attention in the news. The police killed a mountain lion, and they hoped that it would change things. It didn't. The attacks were close now, all near my apartment or the restaurant. It was close, but it just hadn't found me yet. I thought about going out and looking for it, ending this all, but I didn't. Maybe I'm a coward, but I just didn't want to give myself up to that monster. I wanted it to come to me on my own terms. Eventually, I got what I wanted. The management had a policy in place. They would rotate shifts on who had closed the restaurant. Usually, I closed with a line cook named Terry, but Terry had been out sick that night. Rob was the one working in his place. As we closed that night, we didn't talk. He cleaned the kitchen and I cleaned out the front and took the trash out to the door of the kitchen so he could collect it. He shot me a dirty look as I left it there for him. Don't make me clean up your trash, he said coldly. Go take it out yourself. I've got to clean the bathrooms. I'll take that out. I told him. You're going out there anyways. Rob scoffed hatefully, but he didn't argue. I watched him drag the garbage bag that I had taken for him and drag it to the back door of the kitchen, where he then stepped outside. He was gone by the time that I had finished with the bathrooms. That was a little odd. His cleanup was only half done. A mop bucket full of dirty water sat in the kitchen unattended. I hefted the garbage bag from the bathrooms behind me as I tentatively stepped into the kitchen. Rob was nowhere to be found. It occurred to me that maybe he was having a smoke. I wondered if it would have been better to leave the trash bag by the door for him, or to go out and throw it into the dumpster myself. He would probably had seen the former as a gesture of disrespect, and the latter as an interruption. Either way, he would probably get angry. I figured that I might as well take it to the dumpster myself. He would be less angry that way. Opening the door and stepping out into the cool night air, I immediately froze as I saw a familiar set of blood red eyes. In an instant, I was back on Papito Juan's ranch, back in the barn. The beast stood over its kill. Rob still had a look of horror on his face, but I already knew that he was dead. I doubt he even knew what had hit him. The chupacabra was bigger than the other one. It stood almost as large as the dumpster itself, big and bear-like. Its hiss made my bones quiver and it crept over Rob's corpse to advance on me. Looking into those eyes, I knew that it recognized me. It knew who I was and it knew what I had done. Its mouth opened, revealing rows of massive fangs. I could see its rear legs tensing to pounce and I ran. I forced the door behind me closed as I heard the chupacabra slam against it. I locked it, before scrambling towards the personal lockers to find my gun. I could hear the creature slamming against the door, demanding entry as I fumbled the lock. I only barely got it off and had opened the locker when I heard the door behind me break. The hiss of the chupacabra filled the restaurant. I felt the grip on my pistol in my hand, and I immediately got low to the ground. The chupacabra crept through the kitchen, its heavy footsteps betraying its position. It sniffed the air and it hissed in anger. Those footsteps made their way towards the lockers, but it wasn't there yet. I broke into a run, hearing it snarl as I bolted past it and through the kitchen. It was too big to move freely in there and it was too slow to catch me. I got through the door to the dining room and I ducked under a table to hide. I clicked the gun close and I watched the kitchen door carefully. The chupacabra squeezed through it with little effort mere moments after I had hidden. Its teeth were bared and it snarled angrily. It raised its head, sniffing the air to catch my scent, and then it began looking for me. It knew that I was here. Even if I got out, it would follow me. It would kill me. That's why it had come here after all. It swept one of its front talons upwards, knocking over one of the tables near the kitchen. Its head darted around for any sign of movement and it found none. 
With shaking hands, I steadied the gun and I took aim at it. As it raised its body up onto another table, using it as a perch to elevate itself and keep sniffing, the wooden table buckled under its weight. I fired. The chupacabra barely reacted, but I couldn't imagine that I had missed. Its eyes immediately fixed on me, and its mouth curled back into a hellish snarl defined by rage and hate. Stumbling out of my hiding spot, I fired again blindly. The chupacabra bolted towards me and I only barely got out of the way this time. I caught myself hurling unlit candles and drink menus off the tables at it, and they did nothing. I couldn't stop to line up his shot and I didn't want to waste my bullets. I skidded to safety behind the bar and the chupacabra slammed against it. The wooden fixture shook. I heard glasses fall and break all around me. Its blood red eyes appeared over the counter of the bar, glaring at me. I could smell the rot on its breath as it opened its horrible maw and I feel the tears in my cheeks as I cried in fear of death. Hopelessly, I fired at it and I saw it jerk back abruptly. The cry it made was either one of rage or pain. I hoped it was pain. The creature seemed to recoil, batting at its face and I took the opportunity to jump the counter and try to put some distance between myself and the monster. One remaining blood red eye watched me. It hissed in rage and it barreled after me again. It knocked tables and chairs out of its way shattering them with one single swipe of its powerful arms. I couldn't outrun it. There wasn't a chance in hell of that. Ahead of me, I saw a panoramic window. I could see cars on the highway, but it might as well have just been another wall. I would bounce off the glass uselessly if I tried to jump through it, and so powered by adrenaline, I turned sharply. Maybe just maybe I could reach the door. Maybe I could reach my car. Maybe I could escape. The chupacabra did the same. But there was something neither I nor it had thought about. It was bigger and faster, but it wasn't as agile. Its talons scratched the floor as it tried to turn with me. Its massive body skidded a little, slamming against the window. I heard it huff and rage and I saw it getting ready to pounce again. In that moment, I saw my chance. I raised the gun and I fired. The chupacabra jerked backwards. The window shattered and it raised its talon's front legs to shoot its face. All it took was one misstep of its back leg, and it lost its footing entirely. The chupacabra fell gracelessly out of the window, and into the highway. I heard the screech of tires and I saw a pickup truck hit it head on. The chupacabra was thrown out of sight. I saw it roll around on the ground and out of sight like a rag doll. The truck veered off the road. I could see the outline of the driver in the cab. He didn't seem hurt, but I wasn't sure. For a moment, I stood stock still, gun in my hands and my body trembling violently. My eyes darted in the direction the chupacabra had been thrown. I saw no sign of it. Had it run off, how badly was it hurt? I wondered if the impact had been enough to kill it or at least wound it but there wasn't any sign of the body. Just empty scrubland and highway as far as the eye could see. The truck driver was shaken but safe. His grill had taken a serious dent but that was the worst of it. He called the police for me and they showed up soon afterwards. I kept my story vague. I just said that it was an animal attack. What they pieced together was that a bear had killed Rob. It was looking for food in the dumpsters and he had disturbed it. And then it attacked me, fell out of the window, got hit by the truck and then ran off. I didn't say anything different. Nobody would believe that I was attacked by a chupacabra. Why try and convince them? I quit my job the next day. The restaurant would be closed for repairs and I had seen what was after me, face to face. That night, I told Elisa everything. She didn't believe me at first, but I know what I saw. I killed one of those creatures at Papito Juan's ranch, and I was attacked by another one at the restaurant. It tracked my scent and it followed me home, and it was going to keep following me. I don't live near El Paso anymore. 
I don't live anywhere these days. Eliza and I are headed north. We sleep in motels and we're hoping we'll find somewhere to settle down soon. We can start again there. Maybe start up another band and rebuild our lives. I don't know how far we need to go, but I'm hoping I'll figure that out soon enough. I just know that we haven't gone far enough yet. Two days ago, we stayed in a little motel just off the highway, outside of Denver. A couple of hours ago, I heard on the radio that the owner was found dead. He had been drained of blood. He isn't the first. Someone dies in every town that we visit, and I've made my peace with that. I know that I'm to blame. Eliza tells me that I'm not, but it's me that it wants. I killed its offspring, and it wants to return the favor. The chupacabra is coming for me, and I don't know how much farther I can run.